Hello friends, I am Dr. Abhishek Naudari and here I am back with my new video on the management of and the treatment protocols pertaining to snake bite. Friends, this is a very very important topic and this is very very important practically as well. My friends, as an intern and as an MBBS student, you must be aware of the management guidelines and the treatment protocols of a snake bite. You must be aware when do we administer anti-snake venom. What are the snakes that are effective against anti-snake venom? Which snakes are not covered under anti-snake venom? What are the treatment protocols outside the world? What are the treatment protocols in India? What do we do in extra in, in our country? Friends, as an MBBS student and as an intern, you will see numerous cases of snake bite in your entire UG life and your internship days. You must be able to identify the pinpoint differences of a venomous snake and a non-venomous snake. When should we withhold ASV? When should we administer ASV? What are the drawbacks of administering ASV? We'll discuss all about this in our PPT. So let's get started. Friends, in our UG days, we are said to have many differences between venomous snake and a non-venomous snake. For example, we, we study that in venomous snake, the fangs are long and they are two and they are pointed. Whereas in, in non-venomous snake, the fangs are many, they are blunt and they are non-pointed. But my dear friends, in a case of snake bite, due to extensive local edema and soft tissue swelling, you rarely identify the fang mark. So, you cannot identify the snake based on the fang mark. It's only of theoretical use. There is no practical use in studying the differences between venomous and non-venomous snake. You must be able to identify the features of envenomation when you see the patient correctly with your eyes and when you examine him. So, in a case of snake bite, it is the clinical examination which is more important than the history. So, what are the things we should not do while administering ASV? What are the things we should not do while dealing with a case of snake bite? These are the things I will stress upon in my class. Because, my dear friends, we do not study to pass the test or gain some marks. We study for the day when we are the only thing standing between the patient and the grave. And snake bite is one such case where you can bring a great difference in the outcome and the prognosis of the patient just by giving ASV and just by acting at the right time. So, you should see the case mindfully and decide what you should do in case of a snake bite. So, let's see in a clinical point of view, what are the things we must look in a case of snake bite and what are the things we should we should observe in keenly and what are the precautions we should take before administering ASV. So, let's get started. My dear friends, this is not only of practical importance, this topic has been tested numerous times in AIMS as well as in NEET. In AIMS number 2019, a match the following was question was asked, asking about the number of the type of snakes and the identification with the picture. So, and in NEAT as well, there was a question on the administration of ASV. So, this topic is important both practically and theoretically and it has been tested multiple number of times in MCQ exams. So, listen carefully. The first and the very important thing, which of the following should not be done while dealing with the patient of a snake bite? Option A, nitrate spray at the site of the snake bite. Option B, reassurance. Option C, tonic application proximal to the bite. Option D, clean with soap and water. My dear friends, it is of common sense that we will reassurance is to be given for any case of snake bite. Because in India, maximum number of deaths due to snake bite are due to the fear of death rather than the snake bite itself. So reassurance as a common sense medical you must rule out this option. Reassurance will be given to any case of snake bite. Cleaning with soap and water. Again, my dear friends, this topic has been tested many number of times because in a country like in India, we do not have the setup to identify the snake based on the venom of the snake. So, we, we issue the patient to clean with soap and water. But in a country like Australia, the snakes can be identified based on the venom of the snake and the fang mark. So, Cleaning with soap and water is valid only in India. If a question was asked an Australian patient or a, or a case of bite of black mamba, then you will say you do not clean with soap or water. Because this is important my dear friends. In India, we follow it 
we follow our protocol and outside the country there is different protocol so you must be aware of both of them so you have ruled out option b and option d as both of them are done and are to be done for sure in countries like india option a nitrate spray at the site of the bite again my dear friends according to indian protocol nitrate spray or nitrate ointment at the site of the bite will cause vasodilation and will decrease the spread of the snake bite so my dear friend nitrate spray at the site of the bite is recommended in countries like india as per our national protocols so by your first in instinct you may choose option a as the one in this case but that is not the case so nitrate spray is recommended in countries like india and as per our national protocols nitrate spray or nitro nitrate ointment can be used though its efficacy is doubtful in clinical trials it is recommended in india again tonic application proximal to the bite according to bollywood movies or by the movies protocol going by tonic application proximal to the site going by the movies and going by the popular protocol of tonic application so that the snake venom will not spread to the body is a wrong concept my dear friend there is no need of application of tonic in case of a snake bite there is absolutely no need to apply a tonic so this is a wrong statement and it is our option here so our perspective of tying the tonic proximal to the site so that the venom does not reach the systemic circulation is quietly false because when we release the tonic the venom spreads even faster and there are chances of dangerous tachyarrhythmias or dangerous hypotension and if it is a neurotoxic snake like cobra or crate the venom will spread even faster leading to diaphragmatic palsy and instantaneous death of the patient so tonic application may sound good to the ear but tonic application is a big no in case of a snake bite so it is our answer in india we can say that gentle wash with soap and water can be given but not to wash in countries where they can identify the snake by the analysis of the venom for example in a country like australia so you must be aware of the national guidelines first and then we should see what is followed across the world so cleaning with soap and water though it may sound good to the ears it is not followed in australia because they can identify the analysis on the type of snake based on the venom on the bite mark and they can get the specific anti venom against a specific snake but in india we have only one asv that is applicable against four snakes cobra crate russell's viper and soft scale viper so that's that's all that we need to know about tonic application and the snake bite so what are the things which which you should avoid say a big no to tonic say a big no to cutting big no to electrocautery big no to walking my dear friend snake bite patients are recommended not to walk they are recommended to strictly immobilize the patient you cannot just walk the make the patient walk to the hospital you must take care that the patient takes rest and you hold him in a wheelchair or a stretcher and you bring him on it because by walking you increase the chances of spreading of the venom to the heart and the systemic circulation and my dear friends a popular concept shown in some of the movies which is quietly wrong is sucking sucking the wound is strictly a big no in case of snake bite so no tonic no cutting no electrocautery or no walking strict immobilization of the patient of snake bite and no sucking these are the big no's so my dear friends you must be aware of the things which you should not do in case of a snake bite because you will encounter the case of snake bite every now and then in your casualty and you must be able to recognize them easily so a big no to tonic and a big no to sucking so these are all the myths my dear friends you should not apply tonic and you should not do this stuff for example my dear friends when a patient is brought from a periphery to your center then you will find that many of the people many of the many of the people in our country are quite sure that tonic application prevents the spread of the venom to the systemic circulation so they they take a tonic and tie it uh, and tie it very tightly and then bring the patient to the hospital so they do not follow the guidelines but you must be aware of how to cut the tonic when the patient is brought to the casualty with the tonic so firstly you avoid the tonic to prevent the pressure necrosis again if the patient bring the snake bite with him by applying a strict tight tonic then what should you do you should not cut the tonic as and then my dear friends you must inflate the arm or the leg of the patient with the bp cup then you will cut the tonic and then you deflate the bp cup 
gradually. So I repeat, my dear friends, if a patient, if a victim of snake bite is brought to you with a with a tight tourniquet, then you apply BP cuff proximal to the tourniquet, inflate it, and then cut the tourniquet, and then deflate the BP cuff gradually while starting the ASV. So these are the treatment guidelines and the protocol, my dear friend. No matter what you do, you should not cut the tourniquet right away. That will lead to dangerous spread of the toxin throughout the body and dangerous hypotension in case of hemolytic toxins or dangerous paralysis of the diaphragm and instantaneous death in case of neurotoxic envenomation. So, my dear friends, you must be aware. No to tourniquet and when tourniquet is there, how to remove the tourniquet. This can be a potential MCQ in the next team's examination. So, this is a simple mnemonic, my dear friend, to remember how to treat or manage a patient of snake bite. This is a universal mnemonic followed all over the world. Do it right. The first thing you do is should reassure the patient. 70% of the snake bites in India are non-venomous snakes and 50% of the venomous snakes are dry bites. Friends, what do you mean by dry bite? The fear of death has killed more patients than the actual snake bite in our country. Dry bite means the snake actually has bit the person but failed to inject the venom. That may be because of the reaction of the patient. That may be because of the shoes or the sandals the patient might be wearing. That may be because of the venom not sufficient to enter the body of the patient. That may be because of the movement of the patient while the snake actually bit him. So there may be numerous reasons for the dry bite. But believe me my dear friend, 50% of the bites by venomous snakes are due to dry bites. So the first and the most important thing you need to do in a patient, in a patient of snake bite is reassurance. Reassurance has saved more lives in a case in a case of snake bite than the actual anti-snake venom. So my dear friend, reassurance is the key in handling a case of snake bite. Because the patient is already apprehensive and you need to assure him that he is going to be alright and that's all needed as a doctor on your part. Point number two, immobilize. This is very very important my dear friends because I myself have seen many patients being brought to the hospital walking walking by themselves that is strictly not recommended. Do not allow the patient to walk. Do not allow the patient to wear any tourniquet. Say big no to tourniquet, big no to cutting, big no to electrocautery, big no to incision or sucking. So you should not, you should never allow the patient to walk. Again my dear friends, I already predicted a question on this topic. Nitrogesic ointment, nitrate ointment or nitrate spray can be applied locally according to the national guidelines. So, my dear friends, reassurance and immobilization are the first key things as a bystander or as a doctor you must do while you witness a case of snake bite. So, I again emphasize fear of death has killed more patients than the actual snake bite. So, you must reassure the patient right away. Go to the hospital immediately. You should not go to anyone else. You should go to the doctor straight away. T. Tell the doctor of any systemic symptoms that develop on the way to the hospital. So my dear friends, do it right. Right. R stands for reassurance. I stands for immobilization. And G stands for go to the hospital. And T stands for tell the doctor of any systemic symptoms that develop on the way to the hospital. Why is T important? Because if you tell the doctor of any systemic symptoms that are develop on the way like ptosis or any neurological signs or bleeding gums or bleeding epistaxis or anything then the doctor will be able to identify the type of snake and AS wheel will be started right away without any doubt. So it will give you some time and so that the systemic symptoms can be reversed right away. So history is also important in this case. ASV should be ASV or anti-snake venom should be given ideally within 4 hours of the, of the bite as early as possible or ideally within 4 hours of the bite. Again my dear friends, you should be able to integrate the numericals which you have come across in medicine. For example, I call it the bite to needle time should be less than 4 hours. Have you ever read the similar timings in case of anything like in entire medicine have you ever worried like for thrombolysis there is a time gap so you must be able to integrate this with the time so that you'll get all the times at one place and you'll remember them better for example door to needle time in case of mi or myocardial infarction is 30 minutes to 12 hours as early as 30 minutes as late as never later than 12 hours is a door to needle time for myocardial infarction 
The door to needle time in stroke or CVA is four and a half hours, ideally within three hours. So my dear friends, stroke patient, if brought after four and a half hours, thrombolysis is usually not done. Stroke patient, if brought after four and a half hours, thrombolysis cannot be done. My dear friends, in the entire medicine, there are only three indications of thrombolysis. The one is a case of myocardial infarction, which is commonly done. The door to needle time should be within 12 hours, ideally 30 minutes to 12 hours or 6 to 12 hours. Door to needle time in a CVA or stroke is 4 and a half hours or ideally within 3 hours. Again, another case, pulmonary thromboembolism. Door to needle time where also thrombolysis is done is ideally the time should be within 12 to 18 hours. So my dear friends, you need to integrate the medicine in this way so that you can remember all the time zones, all the red, red highlight areas and the one notes and then it becomes easy for you for revision. So we, we know that there are only three indications of thrombolysis in the entire medicine. The one is CVA, the other one is MI and the third one is pulmonary thromboembolism. So let's continue with snake bite. Again, a clinical scenario, my dear friends, with a new pattern of exams and a next incoming line, the clinical scenarios are more likely to be experienced. So I'm giving, I'm dealing with the case of snake bite more clinically so that you'll get to know what you should do and what you should not do. You are a doctor poster in the district health center. At 6 a.m. in the morning, a lady brings her four-year-old child saying she saw a black colored snake slither by the child when she woke up. The mother also exp expresses her concern that she finds the child limp. They examine the child. The child appears drowsy and is drooling. You did not find any fang mark. How would you proceed further? Again, my dear friends, whenever a long clinical scenario or clinical case is given to you, you must be able to identify the keywords. In this case, a black colored snake slithered by the child by when, the, when she woke up, expresses her concern that she finds the child limp. You examine the child, the child appears drowsy and drooling. So the child is limp, the child appears drowsy and limp. So you have seen that the symptoms of neurotoxic envenomation have already started. So when the symptoms start, the best thing and the most important thing you do is to administer anti-snake venom on the go. So let's hear the option. You reassure the mother that there is nothing to worry and keep the child under observation. This is a strict no, my dear friends, because the assurance is not given now because the child is already limp and is drowsy and is drooling. You give the child 50 ml, 50% dextrose. Again, my dear friends, these are not the signs of hypoglycemia and you cannot give dextrose here. Again, you must read your medicine notes of hypoglycemia. What are the neuropsychiatric manifestations of hypoglycemia? In hypoglycemia, the child will be rather aggressive. Uh, there will be signs of sympathetic system activation like tachycardia, palpitation, diffuse sweating, enforces and all that. You do not see all this in this patient. You do a whole blood clotting test and decide how to proceed further. Again, my dear friend, snake bite is an emergency. You cannot just wait for the test results and then give your anti-snake venom. You must start the anti-snake venom as soon as possible when there are clinical or systemic signs of envenomation. So, you consider administering the anti-snake venom immediately. Again, my dear friend, black colored snake and you see that the mother expresses her concern that she, she, she finds the child limp and the child is drowsy and drooling. Drowsy, drooling, child is limp. Systemic signs of envenomation. What is the black colored snake you know of which causes neurological toxicity? Yes, my dear friend, you are right. That is great. Again, my dear friends, in my next slide, I have given information on how to identify the snake. Identification of snakes is very, very important because it is practically very important. And theoretically also, in exams like AIMS, these topics have been tested. I already said in AIMS number 2019, four questions have been asked on this topic in the master following where you need to identify the snake with the picture given it. So, in a case of snake bite, clinical, clinical features and suspicion of snake bite are more important than the history. So, just because there are no fang marks, you cannot exclude the clinical features and the suspicion of snake bite in this case. So, as there are clinical features or systemic signs of neurological envenomation, you must start the ASV as soon as possible. So, to consider administering ASV immediately. This is most likely the case of a crate bite, which is a nocturnal snake, my dear friends. 
Again, my dear friends, you must be able to identify the habits of the snakes so that it helps you easier and it makes you easier to identify the snake and its bite causes little or no inflammation at the bite side. This is very, very important finding, my dear friends. Little or no inflammation at the site and a painless bite by the snake is classically great bite. You do not even see the fang marks in case of a great bite. So high degree of clinical suspicion and systemic signs of inflammation can only give you the idea whether to give the ASV or not. Absence of fang marks doesn't rule out great bite. I repeat my dear friends, absence of fang marks doesn't rule out great bite. I already said the fang marks and all this are only for theoretical purpose and absence of fang marks doesn't rule out great bite practically. So systemic signs of inflammation start ASV as soon as possible. It's a neurotoxic snake, so the child is limping and going into respiratory arrest and you must administer ASV as early as within half an hour. Best decision is to administer ASV. ASV. Time is very crucial to make a difference between a life and a death. Fortunately here, recovery rate is good if timely treatment is done. The crate bite have good a better prognosis than a bite of king cobra or cobra. So you must start the ASV and it can be life saving for the patient. So my dear friends, this is not just an MCQ, it is a life deciding matter for the patient. So you did not study to pass the test. We study to pass for the day when you are the only thing between the patient and the grave and this is one such case. So start ASV as soon as possible. In India, the treatment of choice is polyvalent antivenom after allergic testing. Let's see what are the adverse effects of polyvalent antivenom in the next slide. Question number 3. Which of the following statements is false about snake bite? Cobra venom is neurotoxic. Polyvalent anti-snake venom is effective in pit viper bite. Neostigmin has a role in crate bite. Atropin premedication has to be used before administering neostigmin. So, my dear friends, let's see about the options. Cobra venom is neurotoxic. My dear friends, we know that cobra and crate are neurotoxic. Polyvalent ASV is effective in pit viper bite. Again, my dear friends, I already said that our ASV is working only against four snakes. Cobra, crate, which are neurotoxic, Russell's viper and soft scaled viper, which are hemotoxic. So pit viper, we are not actually sure. So we'll keep this on option as fair. Neostigmin has a role in crate bite. Again, my dear friends, this has been a very, very important previous AIMS question. Neostigmin has no role in case of a crate bite. And it has a role in case of a cobra bite because Crate basically affects the presynaptic inhibition of the release of acetylcholine and cobra causes postsynaptic inhibition of the release. So neostigmin, as we all know my dear friends, neostigmin, pharmacology, again you must be thorough with your knowledge of pharmacology. Neostigmin is a reversible inhibitor of acetylcholine esterase, thereby increasing the levels of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Neostigmin is useful only in case of a cobra bite and has no role in case of a crate bite. So this is a big no. So I will prefer option C over B, which is false statement. Atropin premedication has to be used before administering neostigmin. My dear friends, atropin is an anticholinergic and atropin premedication before neostigmin. Again, pharmacology. You must integrate medicine with pharmacology and physiology. Atropin with neostigmin is used to, to silence or reverse the muscarinic side effects of neostigmin or acetylcholine. Acetylcholine acting on the muscarinic receptors and produces side effects which are encountered by giving atropine premedication so that we can get the action of acetylcholine only at the neuromuscular junction and not at the muscarinic receptors. So again my dear friends going by option B polyvalent anti-snake venom is effective in pit viper bite. Yes it is effective but it is effective by paraspecific activity not by specific activity. I already said that ASV is effective only against four snakes. So we saw that the neuro, neuro, neurotoxic snakes are cobra and king cobra. Again, my dear friends, the bite of cobra is more dangerous than the bite of a threat. Cobra bite leads to the systemic, the systemic manifestations within 30 minutes to 6 hours. So cobra bite is quite fatal and you must act as soon as possible. Crate bite, on the other hand, carries good prognosis. And the signs of crate bite can be seen within 6 to 24 hours. So 
My dear friends, when I encounter a cobra white, you must administer ASV as soon as possible and whenever as possible, whenever it is possible. Again, this is a universal mnemonic for re remembering the signs of elapid envenomation or neurotoxic envenomation. The four piece process the first sign to be seen. Again, my dear friends, whenever you see a snake bite with in the casualty with ptosis, it is neuro neurotoxic snake unless proved otherwise. So, ptosis plus snake bite history plus fang mark, administer ASV as soon as possible. Paralysis of the jaw or tongue, pooling of the secretions. Again, this pooling of the secretions can lead to aspiration pneumonia. You must take care of this while treating the patient of a neurotoxic envenomation. Paradoxical respiration. Again, my dear friends, I already said that it attacks on the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm leading to para paradoxical respiration. So the first sign you see in a patient of a snake bite, which is neurotoxic, is ptosis. So pulling of secretions may lead to aspiration pneumonia and you must take care of it. Diaphragm is affected in case of neurotoxic envenomation and you must be careful, otherwise the patient can die instantaneously. So the bite of a king cobra is usually fatal such that it affects the entire body in less than an hour and the diaphragm is also affected. Paralysis of the intercostal muscles and skeletal muscles occurs in a descending manner. Again, my dear friends, descending paralysis of the intercostal muscles and the skeletal muscles. Again, where did you read about ascending symmetric paralysis? Ascending paralysis, ascending symmetric eryphlexia, causing eryphlexia is classical of Gullian Barry syndrome. In this way, you must integrate the topics in medicine, my dear friends. When you read about descending paralysis, you must think about ascending paralysis. When you read about presynaptic inhibition, you must think about the drugs causing presynaptic inhibition and the drug is botulinum. So crate bite and botulinum are neurologically similar acting. The action of the poison and action of the drug are neurologically similar. So in this way, you must integrate the subjects, my dear friends. If you are not comfortable with the mnemonic of four Ps, you can always remember it as four Ds. So one is diplopia, diplopia due to ptosis and the paralysis of levator palpebrae superiores. And dysphagia, dysarthria are due to the paralysis of vagus and dyspnea due to the paralysis of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscle. So four Ps or four Ds, the same, one and the same. The first thing to see in a case of neurotoxic snake is ptosis. Also in gullian barry syndrome, there is ascending symmetric eryphlexic paralysis. Whereas in crate bite or in a cobra bite, there is descending paralysis. Whereas ascending paralysis is seen in gullian barry syndrome. Again, my dear friends, like already said, this is the presynaptic nerve ending, this is the postsynaptic muscle membrane. My dear friends, this is core physiology and you must be having this at your fingertips. This is acetylcholine which is acting at the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction and some type of receptors are present, initially producing non-depolarizing muscle with action potential in the presynaptic membrane and depolarizing type of action potential in the postsynaptic membrane. So the Snake bite acting presynaptically is crate bite and the snake bite acting postsynaptically is cobra bite. Again, my dear friends, integration with the medicine, which is the drug or the disease which affects the presynaptic membrane, it is the lambert eaton syndrome. The drug used is botulism. It also causes flaccid paralysis. It also causes descending paralysis, just like a crate bite. And the disease affecting the postsynaptic membrane is myasthenia gravis. This is core physiology, my dear friends. Myasthenia gravis acting on the postsynaptic membrane, whereas lambert eaton syndrome acting on the presynaptic membrane. So neostigmine, it increases the level of histylcholine in the synaptic cleft by acting on the reversible inhibitor from histylcholine esterase and it, it has to be administered before by atropine premedication to prevent the muscarinic side effects of neostigmine. And as I said, neostigmine has no role in a crate bite because great bite basically causes presynaptic inhibition of neostigmine of acetylcholine and neostigmine has no role in this presynaptic inhibition. Again, my dear friend, what is the irreversible inhibitor of acetylcholine esterase? Yes, it is organophosphorus poison. You must be aware and you must integrate pharmacology with medicine in this way. So, this is a neurotoxic dosis. Ptosis, diplopia plus blurred vision in a case in a patient of uh, in a victim of snake bite, you must start ASV as soon as possible. It is a medical emergency, my dear friends, and immediate treatment is required as soon as possible. Bilateral ptosis is usually accompanied by diplopia, dysphagia, and progressive muscle paralysis. 
Regardless to say, neurotoxic ptosis is a precursor to respiratory failure and eventual suffocation caused by complete paralysis of the thoracic diaphragm. So I already said my dear friends, neurotoxic venom can affect the diaphragm as soon as possible. So you must start the ASV as soon as possible because neurotoxic ptosis is a precursor to respiratory failure. So whenever you see ptosis, it has to be a danger signal and it has to be an alarm for you to start ASV. Golden period is 30 minutes to save the patient in case of neurotoxic envenomation. It can go up to 4 hours in case of great bite, but the golden period in case of a cobra bite is 30 minutes only. So you have only 30 minutes to make a life, to make a difference in the life of the patient. So act wise and do not waste time for other things and start ASV as soon as possible. Question number 5. Anti-snake venom is not effective against which of the following snakes? Again, my dear friends, this is a frequently tested question. Brussels wiper, soft scale wiper, pit wiper, hump nose wiper. We saw in the earlier question, my dear friends, we saw that the ASV is effective only against four snakes. These are the cobra, the wiper, cobra crate, which are neurotoxic, the Russell's wiper, and the soft scale wiper, which are hemotoxic. And we also saw that ASV is effective against pit wiper as it shows the paraspecific activity. So by paraspecific activity against pit wiper. But hump nose wiper, my dear friends, the cases of hump nose wiper in India are very, very rare. It is found only in North America. And my dear friend, I would say that hump nose wiper is also hemotoxic, but the hemorrhagic manifestations last for up to two to three weeks for more than 10 days. And ASV is not effective against hump nose wiper. This was a potential repeat question, my dear friend. ASV is not effective against hump nose wiper, whereas for pit wiper, it is effective by paraspecific activity. So the answer here is hump nose wiper. ASV provides protection against four snakes only, cobra, crate, russell wiper, and saw scale wiper. Again, my dear friends, I am re repeating it number of times so that you must, be, you must have all these at your fingertip. So you must be aware when the ASV is useful and when the ASV is not useful. Pit wiper by paraspecific activity. This was a previous Ames question. Again, my dear friend, ASV is also not effective against sea snake bite because sea snake bite, we do not have any ASV and sea snake bite causes rhabdomyolysis and instant acute tubular necnosis in death of the patient. So hump nose wiper or sea snake, ASV is not effective against both of them. Question number six. Which of the following features doesn't match with envenomation by the Russell swiper? Option A, local pain. Option B, tender lymphadenopathy. Option C, epistaxis. Option D, none of the following. Again, my dear friends, we know that Russell swiper is hemorrhagic toxin, hemotoxin, so it can cause epistaxis. But you must read the question carefully, my dear friends. I included this question because if you feel that which of the following features matches with envenomation by Russell swiper, the first thing you see is hemorrhagic manifestations and you go for epistax. But no, this question asks what doesn't match with envenomation by Russell swiper. So yes, there is local pain and there is standard lymphadenopathy in case of Russell swiper. Not only hemorrhagic manifestations, pain and lymphadenopathy. Lymph node enlargement can also be seen in case of a bite by Russell swiper. So the answer in this question is none of the above. So I have included this question so that you need to read the question better so that you need to identify the keywords which of the following doesn't match which of the following matches if the question would have been matched with envenomation by russell swiper the answer would have been simple the answer would be epistaxis because russell swiper is a hemotoxin and causes hemorrhagic manifestation so let's look at a case of hemorrhagic manifestation and see what are the systemic signs and symptoms pain and tender lymphadenopathy Again, my dear friends, I would like to emphasize here that the pain and tender lymphadenopathy are not noticed in case of a cobra bite and a crate bite. Particularly, pain is typically absent in case of a crate bite. So absence of pain and absence of tang mark should not rule out a case of crate bite. We already saw one question on this topic where you must administer ASV just by seeing the neurological signs and symptoms. Earliest to find are subconjunctal hemorrhage, epistaxis, and bleeding gums. 
again my dear friend at least to find in case of neurotoxic envenomation is dosis at least to find in case of a hemotoxic envenomation a subconjunctival hemorrhage epistaxis and bleeding gun hypotension hypotension is due to three causes histamine release bleeding extensive bleeding and hemorrhagic manifestations and vomiting all these leading to the loss of fluid and loss of blood and leading to hypotension so hypotension is the grave cause of death in case of hemotoxic envenomation pain and tender lymphadenopathy are not noticed with cobra and great bite retroperitoneal bleed my dear friends you must sus suspect retroperitoneal bleed when the patient complains of severe abdominal pain and vomiting so russell swiper bite the severe abdominal pain plus vomiting you must suspect retroperitoneal bleed again my dear friends it is not a clinical diagnosis it is based on only ct or mri which you can diagnose a retroperitoneal bleed but a high degree of clinical suspicion can can say whether there is retroperitoneal bleed because there is disproportionate abdominal pain in patients of russell swiper bite and then you will suspect retroperitoneal bleed acute tubular necrosis in the kidney flank pain and black urine acute tubular necrosis in the kidney may occur due to rhabdomyolysis or direct damage of the toxin to the kidney and it presents clinically with flank or back pain with black colored urine black colored urine is basically due to hemoglobin passed out in the urine which is hemoglobinuria so acute tubular necrosis in kidney will present with flank pain and black colored urine which is basically hemoglobinuria so pain and tender lymphadenopathy earliest symptom to seen is subconjunctival hemorrhage epistaxis and bleeding gums acute tubular necrosis is caused by russell swiper and soscal wiper not by pit wiper so hypotension is a grave emergency and is a cause of death in case of envenomation by russell swiper so these are simply the signs and symptoms which you can see these are the bleeding manifestations the limb is swollen disproportionately and this is swelling in case of soft tissue swelling and these are the bleeding gums so these are manifestations of russell swiper again this is very very important my dear friend it is important for us to identify the type of the snake so that in future we can give the type specific anti venom to the patient so identification of the snake has been tested multiple times in numerous exams and has been a recent aims question so you must be thorough with the identification marks of the snake for example if it is a case of common cobra you see a hood hood with spectacle mark common cobra is hooded with a spectacle mark for example it is a king cobra hooded without spectacle mark again my dear friends this is a big confusion between two hooded with spectacle mark is common cobra hooded without spectacle mark is king cobra we often tend to attribute special characters to king cobra and we tend to think that spectacle mark is characteristic of king cobra again my dear friends this has been a aims question where both cobra and king cobra was were given and the answer was common cobra common crate again my dear friends we saw in the history it is a black colored snake with white bands on the body black snake with white bands on the body is crate unless proved otherwise again vipers there are four types of viper russell viper russell viper is a very big snake my dear friends and there are three rows of diamond diamond shaped black or brown spots again my dear friends in our country russell viper is the snake which cannot move swiftly and which cannot move swiftly so russell viper we have seen many cases of where the patients and the attenders of the patient brought the snake dead to the casualty so russell viper is such a snake where you you would have seen in your internship or your ug days there have been numerous cases of russell viper envenomation where they the attenders actually brought the patients to the casualty so it is having three rows of diamond shaped black or brown spots pit viper again my dear friends pit viper is a vertical eye slit and a pit below the nostril the name itself says a pit below the nostril is pit viper saw scaled viper again my dear friends the one snake which which you can hear rather than see is saw scaled viper because it can it produces a characteristic hissing noise and also saw scaled viper as a narrow has a narrow mark on the head and the fourth and important and the most important viper is hump nose viper whereas it where where it is having an enlarged and a snout head again my dear friends hump nose viper asv is not effective and hump nose viper is also not very common in our country so cobra and king cobra neurotoxic hooded with spectacle mark and without spectacle mark crate black 
black color snake with white colored bond, tussel swiper, big and a fat snake, three rows of diamond shaped black or brown spots, pit viper, name itself says has a pit below the nostril, soft tailed viper, a snake which, which is heard more than seen because it character, characteristically produces a hissing noise and a hump nose viper which is having an enlarged and a snout head and ASV is not effective against hump nose viper, ASV is not effective against sea snakes. So, to summarize the signs and symptoms associated with the snake bite, this is a very, very important table, my dear friends. Local pain and tissue damage. Pain and tissue damage are not seen with crate bite. So, no pain and no fang marks in case of crate bite. Neostigmin and atropin. Again, my dear friends, neostigmin and atropin has a role in cobra bite, no role in crate bite because crate bite it causes presynaptic inhibition. Painless bite is crate bite. Ptosis and neurotoxicity are seen with cobra and crate. Again, my dear friend, this is very, very important. Ptosis may be seen in case of a bite with Russell's viper. Russell's viper may have slight features of neurological toxicity as well. This can be a potential next exam question because Russell's viper, we all know that it is a hemotoxic and but it can also produce ptosis and neurotoxicity. Coagulation abnormalities are seen with Russell's viper, Soskeld viper and other types. And the renal problems, of course, they are common with Russell's viper and other vipers, but not seen with Soskeld viper. What are renal problems? Acute tubular necrosis. Acute tubular necrosis presents with flank pain and hemoglobinuria or black colored urine. So flank pain or back pain immediately sus suspect acute tubular necrosis and start dialysis as in when. So this is a table which is important, my dear friends, to differentiate between the different types of snake based on the signs and symptoms. Again, I already emphasized it is, these are the signs and symptoms which are more important in snake bite than the history. So let's look at the images of the snakes and try to identify the snakes based on the images. So it is a hooded with a spectacle mark. What is it my dear friend? Hooded with spectacle mark is cobra. And it is hooded without a spectacle mark. Hooded without a spectacle mark. What is it, my dear friends? It is King Cobra. So, it is very important, my dear friends, to differentiate between Common Cobra and King Cobra. Common Cobra hooded with spectacle mark. King Cobra hooded without a spectacle mark. Again, my dear friends, scientific names of the snakes are also important. Especially Cobra and King Cobra. Common Cobra is called as Naja Naja. King Cobra is called as Ophiophagus Hanna. Again, my dear friends, Black snake with white bands on the body is great unless proved otherwise. And great bite causes neurotoxicity and pain is often absent and the fang marks are also very faint. And fang marks doesn't lose, doesn't rule out great bite. And again, neostigmin has no role in the management of great bite. See, this is a large snake with diamond colored scales on the belly. It is none other than Russell's fight. Again, my dear friends, this is a saw-scaled viper with characteristic arrow mark on the head. You can clearly make out the arrow mark on the head and it is brown colored scale, sandy brown in color with scales on the body and arrow mark on the head and the snake produces characteristic hissing voice. So it is saw-scaled viper. Again, my dear friends, you can see that the head is disproportionately long for this snake and it is none other than the hump nose viper. So, we also saw that ASV is not effective against a hump nose viper, ASV is not effective against a sea snake. I am repeating these points multiple number of times so that while watching the video, you would have revised the topic of snake, snake bite twice or thrice. Again, my dear friends, what is this snake? We can see the characteristic pit, pit and then below the nostril above it. Pit below the nostril, it is characteristically pit viper. So pit viper ASV is effective by paraspecific activity. So these are the five, five types of snakes, my dear friends. This is pit viper, this is hump nose viper, this is saw scale viper, character shifting voice and arrow mark on the head. And again, this is Russell's viper. So cobra and king cobra you can identify very easily and crate is also easily identifiable. The only thing is you will confuse between the types of vipers. So I made it, I made it clear in this presentation. Hope it clears your doubts. Pit. Characteristically, characteristically, there is a pit below the nostril and this pit will be highlighted in your exams, my dear friend. So, pit viper can be potential MCQ. Again, this is a very, very important, my dear friends. 
what are the investigations you do and how you how do you follow up the patient of a snake bite the first and the most Im important investigation you must do is whole blood clotting test it is the very very important bedside test and there is no need for any laboratory for this test this test can be can be done right in your periphery as well so whole blood clotting test is a very important bedside test for the diagnosis of a snake bite again my dear friends this is not the diagnostic test of the snake bite high degree of clinical suspicion and systemic signs of envenomation are important but this test whole blood clotting test is useful for the degree of envenomation and the prognosis of the patient so how do we do it this is a test which can be performed in any hospital from the periphery to the tertiary care hospital here is the procedure draw 2 ml of venous blood and transfer it directly to creed and dry tissue leave it upright open undisturbed for 20 or 30 minutes at room temperature after exactly 20 minutes pick up the tube and invert it if a solid clot is retained the test indicates normal coagulation if the clot breaks down quickly upon inversion of the tube or fails to coagulate the test indicates a coagulopathy so this is an important test so that you can suspect disseminated intravascular coagulation or any hemotoxic envenomation or signs of systemic toxicity just by bedside test which is 20 minute whole blood clot test so again my dear friends this test is not useful for the diagnosis of a patient of snake bite this test has only prognostic value and is useful only in the periphery you can go for coagulation studies if they are available in your hospital at your emergency but this test traditionally has got importance again repeated every 30 minutes for the first three hours of admission this can be a potential question because you have to repeat this test after every 30 minutes of the first three hours of admission so that you can see whether the patient is improving with your asv or not another tests which are done are cbc for the baseline hemoglobin and the leukocyte count lft or the liver function test for the liver abnormalities rft rft is very very important in case of a snake bite especially in case of a russell swiper or a soft scale wiper because they can cause acute tubular necrosis so renal function test are especially useful in case of a wiper bite where you obtain the baseline serum creatine so that you can obtain whether there is pre to three renal acute tubular necrosis again my dear friend when you see this is pre renal snake bite the cause of pre renal acute tubular necrosis you must know what are the renal causes of acute tubular necrosis and what are the post renal causes of acute tubular necrosis coagulogram this is bleeding time prothrombin time and activated plasma thrombopathy time all these are important my dear friends because they are they can be done at your tertiary setup only so whole blood clot whole blood clotting test or wct popularly known as wct wct is done in any primary hospital and coagulogram is done after admission into the hospital and coagulogram is only available in a tertiary care setup where pt and aptt take time for the reports to arrive again my dear friend prothrombin time you must read in your pharmacology and physiology knowledge what is the pathway which prothrombin time tests it is extrinsic pathway aptt test the intrinsic pathway these must be at your fingertips my dear friends again the sole and the most important thing that we are studying snake bite is because of the management. So let's see the management protocol. Pain. Pain is disproportionately large in case of wiper bite. Pain is absent in case of crate bite. So the ideal NSA for pain management in case of snake bite is paracetamol. This was this is a potential question, my dear friend. Simple paracetamol is enough to manage the pain caused by the snake bite. Polyvalent ASV is the must and is the treatment of choice in all case of snake bite and must be started as soon as possible. Injection hydrocortisone and phenyramine malleate to prevent anaphylax. Again, my dear friends, there are many disadvantages in administering ASV. So, hydrocortisone injection has, has to be given and phenyramine malleate. This may sound not, not so familiar with you, but yes, my dear friends, you have done it all in your internship, that is injection every. Avil and hydrocortisone are the two which you must give before administering ASV to prevent the chances of anaphylaxis. Again, clinical scenario 7. A 40-year-old man and his 10-year-old child were bitten by a snake and were brought to the casualty. You notice that the fang marks were visible in both the patients and there was extensive pain, swelling and tenderness around the bite marks. You give 
650 mg paracetamol tablet to the man and 500 mg paracetamol tablet to the child to control the pain. Again, my dear friends, the anesthetic of choice to control the pain in case of snake bite is paracetamol. Then you decide to administer ASV on high clinical suspicion. Again, my dear friends, you need not wait for any lab test or you need not wait for the test of WCT. You must administer ASV as soon as possible. What should be the ideal dose of the ASV given to the given to the man and, the, and his child? So, ideal dose of ASV to be given to the man and his child. So, this is a bit tricky. Look at the options. Man 20 miles, child 10 miles. Man 10 miles, child 10 miles. Man 20 miles, child 20 miles. Calculate the dose based on the weight of the patient. Again, my dear friends, this is not rabies vaccine. You do not calculate the weight of the immunoglobulin or weight of the ASV based on the weight of the patient. Again, my dear friends, the correct answer in this case is man and child both we give 20 vials. This is a simple common sense phenomenon, my dear friends, because snake bites the man and the child in the same way. It do not differentiate between a man and a child. It does not, does not inject more venom into man and less venom into a child. So you must, you need not calculate the dose based on the age or the sex or the pregnancy status or anything. ASV dose remains the same for any one of them. The reason is simple, common sense. Snake bites the man as similarly as it bites the child. It does not have any differentiation in its mind. So the dose remains the same for adult, for pregnant or any child. This practically important question, my dear friends. You may get confused in the examination by seeing the options. So never get confused by seeing the option. It's a practical common sense question. So you must be you must have use your common sense in your examination. Such questions can be framed in aims. Recently, a question on dog bite was asked. So, in this, in the next time, a question on the calculation of dose of this snake bite can be asked. So, common sense itself is enough to solve some questions in the exam. And this is one such question. Question number 8. Your doctor posted in the PHC, at 4 a.m. in the morning, a lady brings her 6-year-old child saying, she saw a brown colored snake stitter by the child with characteristic hissing noise. The child limb was swollen and dark in color. The child complained of severe abdominal pain. The child was hypotensive and lethargic. But there are no fang marks found on the skin. How would you proceed further? Again, my dear friend, you see that the child's limb was swollen and dark in color. He is complaining of severe abdominal pain. He is hypotensive and lethargic. So, no fang marks doesn't rule out a, the case of a snake bite in this case. And you already saw characteristic hissing noise. It is produced by soft scale viper. The snake which is heard better than it is seen. It is soft scale viper. It is sandy brown in color with large scales on its body and produces characteristic hissing noise. Again, why are those, there are no fang marks in the skin? Again, theoretically fang marks should be there. But the amount of edema and soft tissue swelling can mask the fang mark. So theoretical knowledge itself is not enough to manage the case of a snake bite. High degree of clinical suspicion and practical knowledge can be has to be there. So swelling and tissue edema can mask the fang marks, and fang marks may not be found in the skin. So how would you proceed further? You reassure the mother there is nothing to worry and keep the child under observation. You give the child 50 ml 50 dextrose. Again, my dear friends, I already discussed the signs of hypoglycemia. Sympathetic overactivity is not found in this child. You do a whole blood clotting test and decide. To proceed further again my dear friends i said it is not the diagnostic test it is only a prognostic test and a bedside test done at the periphery you consider administering anti-snake venom immediately yes you must administer anti-snake venom immediately as the child is hypotensive and lethargic and he also complains of abdominal pain again my dear friends abdominal pain in case of a viper bite abdominal pain plus vomiting in case of a viper bite you must suspect retroperitoneal bleed so, administer anti-snake venom immediately as soon as possible. So, popularly, the indications of ASV can be read, read under five conditions. The first one is coagulopathy. Coagulopathy and bleeding manifestation. You do not wait for anything. You start ASV as soon as possible. Neurotoxicity. We have, said, we have read about neurotoxicity and the four piece of neurotoxicity. The first sign to develop is ptosis. Ptosis, pooling of secretions, dysphagia. And four Ds, dysphagia, dysnea, dysarthria, all can be there. So, 
four piece and four days you will see clinically by asking the patient to rise the neck so if he is not able to rise his neck it indicates the paralysis of the muscle and you start the sv as soon as possible or you can also ask the patient to count the numbers in one single breath like 1 2 3 4 5 6 in one single breath this is known as single breath analysis my dear friends single breath test sbt single breath test indicates the involvement of diaphragm and intercostal muscle if the patient is not able to count more numbers it indicates impending diaphragmatic paralysis and it is an emergency and you need to start asv as soon as possible in cardiovascular system the complications are hypotension and arrhythmia whereas in git there is severe pain and vomiting so severe pain and vomiting in the abdomen suggest retroperitoneal failure again my dear friends a clinical suspicion plus ct and mri is a must to diagnose a case of retroperitoneal failure local swelling more than half of the circ- circumference of arm and leg so high tissue swelling is also an indication of uh, indication that the snake is venomous and you need to start the sv as soon as possible so popularly there are only two indications systemic signs of coagulopathy or bleeding manifestations and neurotoxicity in cvs there can be hypotension and git there may be retroperitoneal bleed extensive soft tissue swelling and edema in necrosis are also an indications of starting asv Clinical scenario number eight. A 20-year-old male working in Agumbi Rainforest, Karnataka, came to the casualty in view of snake bite. He saw the snake and described it to have a spectacle-shaped mark on the head. The snake bit him on the right leg. He complained of immense pain in the leg. On examination, you find that he developed bilateral ptosis and is speaking with difficulty. You decide to start ASV immediately. After about 15 minutes of starting ASV. He develops strider and cyanosis suddenly. You notice his blood pressure to be falling. What would you do next? Again, my dear friends, long clinical scenario. You need to identify the key words. Agumbi Rainforest, Karnataka. Again, my dear friends, you must be able to identify the nativity of the snakes present in the India. Cobras and king cobras are found exclusively in Agumbi Rainforest, Karnataka. Exclusively in Tamil Nadu. Exclusively in West Bengal. Exclusively in Assam. These are the four states you must look in when you suspect a cobra bite. On examination, you find that he developed bilateral ptosis and is speaking with difficulty. So, bilateral ptosis, impending diaphragmatic paralysis, has to be suspected, and you must start ASV as soon as possible. WCT and other investigations are to be done at a later time. So, bilateral ptosis, speaking with difficulty, cobra bite within 30 minutes, it can lead to impending death of the patient. So, start ASV as soon as possible. So, good, you started ASV. But after 15 minutes of starting ASV, he develops strider and cyanosis suddenly. You notice his blood pressure and oxygen to be falling. What would you do next? Wait and watch as ASV is already started and hope the patient will recover soon. Increase the dose of ASV as the patient's dose is not as the present dose is not sufficient. Suspect anaphylaxis and give adrenaline, adrenaline 1 in 1000 IM immediately. Suspect anaphylaxis and give adrenaline. One in thousand IV immediately. Again, my dear friends, strider, cyanosis, and falling hypotension and oxygen saturation in a patient receiving ASV, you must suspect anaphylaxis. You cannot wait and watch in a case of anaphylaxis, my dear friends. Again, you cannot increase the dose of ASV. Already, it is causing anaphylaxis. Suspect anaphylaxis and give adrenaline one in thousand IV. So IV. Yes, my dear friends, I get your doubt. You can see that one in thousand adrenaline IM is the drug of choice in case of management of anaphylactic shock. This is the dose. Which, this is the dose and the route which is recommended in all standard textbooks. But only and only indication of IV adrenaline in anaphylaxis shock is due to anaphylaxis to ASV, because IM adrenaline is avoided because it causes muscle hematoma in case of viper bite, and In markedly hypotensive patients, IM absorption may not occur properly. So, the only the only indication to give IV adrenaline in case of anaphylaxis shock is snake bite. So, IM adrenaline is the drug of choice in case of anaphylaxis shock. But IM leads to muscle hematoma in viper bite and deranious absorption in case of hypotensive patients. So, IV adrenaline one in thousand is given. In case of anaphylaxis to ASV, again we did one mistake here. We did not give hydrocortisone and Evil to the patient to prevent anaphylaxis. 
may be so he developed anaphylaxis so quickly again iv adrenaline 1 in 1000 can lead to arrhythmias but this is an emergency by dear friends you cannot think of the side effects and adverse effects of adrenaline in such cases you must give iv adrenaline otherwise the patient will die of anaphylaxis so suspect anaphylaxis in a patient developing cyanosis strider falling blood pressure falling oxygen saturation in a patient receiving asv the first 15 to 30 minutes are the golden period my dear friends all the interns and the mba students you must be aware of this fact and you must be accompanied accompanied by the patient you, and you must have a look at the patient who is receiving asv otherwise you may lose the patient so iv adrenaline 1 in 1000 is a drug of choice again i would repeat i would emphasize my dear friends im adrenaline is the root of choice is the drug of choice for all anaphylaxis shock only indication to give iv adrenaline in anaphylaxis is snake bite so this was all my dear friends you need to listen to the case and the history very nicely you must observe the patient for the signs and the symptoms of envenomation then you must think of what would have happened which snake would have bit him and then you need to act so you are here to save the life of the patient it is it is on your decision that there is life and the death of the patient is resting so you do not study to pass the test you are studying for the day when you are the only thing between the patient and the grave and that day is this day when you see a patient of snake bite so listen observe think and then act so that's all for today my dear friend let's meet tomorrow for another class thank you signing up